Hey, this is Scott Krieger from MUSC, and we're going to talk about the 3100B oscillator. Um, the first thing you want to do is, is after you um, do your pre-cal and do your checklist on there to self-center the piston, is you want to inflate the lung, okay, and recruit it. You do, by, do that by setting the mean airway pressure, okay, and the mean airway pressure is set by moving this knob right here and adjusting that, okay, so you just turn that until you get the mean airway pressure you need. And typically, your starting off point on the ventilator would be about five centimeters above where you were on conventional vent settings, okay? Get your mean airway pressure, check a chest x-ray, see what type of, uh, see what type of recruitment you have via your lung displacement. You want to see it one, two, three, at least eight ribs just extended, okay? <clears throat> all right, so we've got the lung inflated, all right? So now, what we have to do is we've got to ventilate it a little bit. We do that by moving the piston, okay? So the whole circuit and the patient's lungs are pressurized, okay? And then we move this piston that's in here, okay? We move that back and forth, okay? And it's active exhalation. And then it pushes the pressurized air, and then it pulls the pressurized air out, okay? That creates the ventilation. All right. So we create the range of piston displacement by setting the power, okay? All right, and that is set by, you slide this up, which is a locking feature, you turn that until you read this in this, in this uh, window here, okay, and it's currently at 6.2, all right, and then when you get your desired number, all right, you lock it back in place, all right, and you want to usually start this out at about a delta P of 75, but you want to ensure that you have good chest wiggle down to the mid-thigh region, okay, so make sure his thighs are jiggling, all right, so after that, we want to determine how fast we move that piston, okay? And that's done by the frequency. And it's in hertz, as you can read here, all right? And it says six, all right? We dial it in by this, all right? So each hertz represents 60 cycles, okay? So 60 times six, in this case, would be 360, if I'm doing my math right, all right? So 360 times a minute, we move the piston back and forth right down, okay? All right. And the final thing is the inspiratory time. It's typically, we started at 33%, all right, and we adjust it here, all right, and what this tells me is that we move the piston forward 33% of the cycle time, all right, and then we actively pull the, the piston back 67% of the time, all right. If we wanted to increase our ventilation, we would increase our eye time. That would give the piston longer to displace air, all right. So the next thing we have is our bias flow, and that's the flow that provides the circuit pressure, okay? So we've got this flow, and it's dialed in here. We typically start it at 30 to 40 for an adult, okay? Let's talk about the mushroom valves, all right? And those are controlled by the mean airway pressure knobs, okay? And they're supplied by the flow of the, of the gas from the bias flow, all right? And as we increase the mean airway pressure, we seal off these valves that are located in here, okay? So the higher we go up on the map, the more we seal them off, and conversely, the more we decrease the map, the more we release pressure, okay? So that's what creates the pressure in the lungs, okay? All right. <clears throat> so to control oxygenation, we go up on this, all right? To control ventilation, we'll go up on our power, all right? So the next thing we want to talk about is what happens if the ventilator shuts down. That's the biggest thing, okay? Let's say we're turning the patient or for whatever reason he becomes disconnected, all right? In order for the piston to move, it has to have pressure in the circuit, otherwise it'll burn up. All right, so if we get disconnected for whatever reason, um, the first thing we're gonna do is, is not panic. We're gonna push the reset button here, okay? Push and hold until our circuit repressurizes, all right? And then once we do that, we can hit the start, stop button on the piston, and that will engage the piston and it'll start to move again. You can hit this all day long. If there's no pressure in the circuit, the piston will not start on you. Okay? So you always remember that. Alright. <clears throat> Next thing we've got is let's talk about let's talk about this number here. And it's kind of an uh, indirect measurement of lung compliance. And I'll explain that here. Um, as you go up on this power button, alright, you're actually going up on the volume displaced by the piston. Alright? So if you're sitting at a particular power for X amount of time, and say right here, it's delta P is the change in pressure is 83, okay? 
say a couple hours later you come back and it's up to 86 or 88. Well, the lungs become more compliant, okay? Because the piston is still moving the same range, but in doing so, it's, it's able to displace more volume and therefore displace more pressure. All right, let's go the other direction on that. All right, if the lung becomes less compliant, say he gets fluid overloaded or stiff for whatever reason, or plugs, um, this number here will decrease, all right? And that tells us that the piston is still moving the same range, but this time it's not able to displace as much volume. Therefore, it's not able to change as much pressure, okay? The mean airway pressure is also compliance dependent, meaning when there's compliance changes in the lung, this number will either go up or go down, all right? The only two fixed numbers, really, are the inspiratory time and the frequency, all right? <clears throat> okay, so moving on. We've got a blender system over here. Let's see if I can pan into it. All right, so that dials in our FO2, and then we can analyze off this flow meter here. Uh, we've got to hook the All right. So basically, anything that comes out of this flow meter has been has been altered by the blender. Okay. So whatever you have seen that on, that's what you get. All right. The other thing is. Oscillator can be very dry into the lungs, so we have to supply some heat. And we've got a heated, heated wire circuit, okay? It's plugged in like that, and what we do is we hook the water bag up to pressurize, um, a pressure bag, just a normal uh, infusion bag pressure, okay? And that, it, that keeps the oscillator from pushing the water up out of the float chamber and back into the bag, okay? And when that happens, you can crack your float chamber, all right? <coughs> so, Tips on the oscillator is right here. So what you want to do is limit your disconnects because every time you disconnect, you de-recruit the lung. It happens immediately. All right? Same with tracheal suction. Only do it, you know, once per shift maybe, but I recommend doing it when there's patient changes like a decrease in delta P or a decrease in saturations so maybe maybe the cause. All right? <clears throat> because you have immediate de-recruitment. ABGs, when you make a change, wait a few hours before you get a gas, okay? Otherwise, you could be just chasing your tail in directly. Um, this is supposed to be lung protective, so the less we ventilate, the less we ventilate, the better the chance are for the lungs to heal, all right? So, uh, allow for permissive hypercapnia with lower PO2s, all right? Frequent superglottic suctioning is important because these patients are typically paralyzed or heavily sedated, all right? You want to clear the orifacts for secretion so it doesn't indirectly get down the, the EP tube and into the lungs and cause ventilator-associated pneumonia. No bronchodilators, obviously, because you don't know where the deposition of the medication is going. All right, and then we talked about the chest wiggle. You want it to go to the thighs, so make sure those thighs are with you. All right, and then if you get decent blood gases, lean your vent to the lower targets because you want to be ultimately lung healing. All right. So those are your plans right there. So let's talk about ventilation strategies. All right, so to control CO2, first thing we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the power. Going up on the power moves more volume of the piston, okay, and we'll ventilate you more, all right? The other thing that can do it is the frequency. As you increase the frequency, you are shortening the time the piston has to displace volume, so therefore you will make your tidal volume actually smaller, all right? Going in the opposite direction, as we decrease the frequency, we're allowing for more time for the piston displaced, therefore we will move larger tidal lines. As we approach a frequency of three, we are starting to approach uh, low tidal line strategies that are, that are, con that are con um, currently the benchmark in ARDS uh, network care. And then the final thing would be inspiratory time. Like I said, increasing that to 50% gives more time for the piston to displace. The other thing you can consider is um, a small cuff leak on the ET tube. You can indirectly blow out some more CO2 that way. And speaking of the ET tube, make sure your numbers uh, face the chin when the ET tube is, is uh, pointing downwards. So the ET tube markings, you know, when we tape the ET tube at, make sure that is pointing towards the chin, okay? That centers the bevel in the airway, and make sure we have uniform oscillation to both lungs. Okay, thanks for listening to me. And I'll talk to you later.